Right, so buying second-hand cars. Now, the first thing I would say is that if you've got to get a car in a hurry, it's different to if you've got plenty of time. Say you need a car desperately uh, to get to work or your wife needs to get to work and uh, you just need a car as quickly as possible. Well, then you haven't got much time for thought, have you? You've just got to go basically on gut reaction, look through uh, the papers and... Um, and uh, look through dealers um, and see what's what's there and see what uh, what what looks like the thing you want um, if you've got time then you're much better off so this is how I'd say you do it if you've got time first of all you've you you need to think what car you want look at other cars on the road um, what what are other people buying why are they buying those cars um, and uh, you know are you going to have a lot of people in the car are you just going to be using the car for short journeys if you need a lot of people in the car you, you've got to have a big car haven't you because um, if you just have a small car and you, you have to fit four, four or five adults into it it's, it's going to be a pain um, so th then uh, is uh, miles per gallon important to you? Is performance important to you? Um, so you can check all these things on the internet about miles per gallon. Um, one thing I do is I look at other cars on the road and I say, see if um, there's old ones on the road, like the uh, Peugeot 106. You see masses of Peugeot 106s on the road still. Um, so you know it's a car that lasts and mine has lasted. And then what happened was uh, a friend of mine said oh what you need is a Peugeot 106 diesel the mile, miles per gallon is fantastic and uh, and it was yeah and and I got one and, and it was so uh, yeah t take notice of what friends say um, if you buy from a dealer you're going to be charged VAT 17.5 percent VAT you're going to have a warranty the car you buy has got to be fit for purpose so if it's not fit for purpose you can take it back even if you don't buy an extended warranty if you buy privately you've got no warranty and it's uh, buyer beware caveat exemptor you, 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 the, the moment you change the, give the money over or you drive it outside the person's gate um, if the engine falls out or whatever, uh, you've got no comeback whatsoever. So be, be aware of that. So if you're buying something privately, take someone with you who knows what they're doing. Um, you know, certain things you do, do like look at the dipstick. If there's, uh, if there's any white sort of water in, in with oil, you know, it's not a good idea because the head gasket's gone. Um, if... Uh, if you, if you thrash the car and the clutch, if you take it for a test drive and give it a good thrashing and the clutch slips, um, you'll know it's not a good idea. Uh, if the engine makes excessive um, knocking noises, you'll know it's not a good idea. If it's black smoke, that's another one. Um, so there's various things that you can work out. If the gears are, are, are any trouble at all, you know, I shouldn't buy it because, uh, well... I just wouldn't buy it a difficult gearbox because you just don't know how much that will cost to change it. Um, uh, and check up on other prices on the internet. What what sort of prices people are charging for the car. Um, and then, then do a deal. Don't be afraid to haggle. Knock the person down. And um, yeah, I would go for private sale myself nowadays. <coughs> Unless you buy a new one, of course, that is. Right, bye.